Welcome back to the channel. Typically videos on this channel show you how you can get more out of your analytical or chemical data. Well, in this video, I wanna demonstrate how we can actually automate this analysis using a Jupyter extension called Scheduler. Let me show you. In my notebook, I have this notebook called Scheduled Job, and it is a simple process that imports pandas in, in OS. We are using this absolute string path to locate this Excel file called Sheet and we're just gonna create a previous file list. We are also going to look in this time course data folder for any file with the name of file in it and generate a list called current files. In the final cell, we're just gonna compare the length of current files to the length of the previous file list. And if these are the same, nothing happens. That is this else. Or if the length of the current files is longer, i.e. we've added some new file to this folder, we're going to update that file called sheet. And so let me show you how we can automate this process. If you go to the extensions tab, and here you see I've already installed it, but we have this Jupyter Lab scheduler extension, and this just allows us to automate the notebook. And once you install it, you'll see a new icon in the top right corner, and we can create a new job. Now we can just call this job scheduled job, and it will have some input folder. So one key thing is to use the absolute path length. We can also now select the output formats, either notebook or HTML. Let's just select HTML. And we can either run it now, we can create this and then tell it when to run, or we can run on a schedule. So what I'm gonna do for this demonstration is to run every minute on this schedule. And so if we run this, this was now run every minute, you will see that this was created at 11, 19 p.m. Yes, I am recording this video quite late. And I will jump the time, but you will now see as we begin to upload new data into this folder, we will now see the updated sheet list. So here we have it. This is our sheets we're looking at now to update. Let me show you where we start right now. This file list is empty. If we zoom in here, you see there's no file here, even though there is a file in this folder. So let me close this. And this job will now run every minute. And once this runs, we will see that this sheet will now be updated. And so this file just ran and we have a new file underscore zero added to our sheet list. If I open this up again, you will see this. Let me move it over. We now have file zero there. So what I want to do is synthesize data streaming in. So let me copy a few files from this merge data folder and add them to our sheet. So there we have it. Let's up, let's look at our sheet again. And now we have our updated file list files zero through four. And let's just do this one more time just to ensure that this works. Of course, there's other ways we can control the flow of this. There is no way to check for duplicates or what happens if I remove a file, but this is just one very simple implementation of this process of scheduling a notebook task. Okay, so this is now run again. We see that the timestamp was updated. If you look at this, we now have 17 or 18 files. We have several more files added to our file list in no particular order. So now you can see we have a very simple implementation of this scheduled notebook task. We can see that we are looking at this job definition. This is scheduled every minute. We can pause this. And if we want to stop this, maybe we don't want to run after hours or we don't, uh, or we want to make some tweaks to the notebook. We can also look at the notebook jobs here in this corner. I see that this has run at 1120, 1121, 1122. And we can look at the output files. In this case, it's just gonna be the HTML based on how we set up the notebook definition. And based on this, we have a few outputs. So we can see that the current files, which is gonna be based on our last data transfer, is several files long. And based on our flow, the current length of current files is greater than the length of the previous files. And so if we see this updated sheets, it meant it took this path through our if statement and has now outputted the updated sheets. We can see that before this transfer, previous file list only contained files zero through four. And so of course this works out. Furthermore, if we want to see one of the other jobs, we can do the same thing and we have this HTML. So we do have a nice record of 
what happened over the course of this experiment. We don't necessarily have to schedule to run this frequently, maybe on an hourly basis or daily basis if you're generating reports, but this is a very easy way to automate some of your tasks, especially as data might be coming in off of an instrument or you're collecting data from multiple sources and want to do some sort of aggregation experiment. In any case, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.